In today's tutorial, let's do a shamrock dishcloth together. Let's uh, bring out a little bit of Irish in you and let's be able to make this. I'll teach you how to do this in just a moment. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial, we're going to work on this shamrock dishcloth together and this is a really easy project. So what you're looking at here is three different pieces of the shamrock down here with the ring. So you just have to do these. So these are a triangle granny. There's one, two and three of those and then just a round ring. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do one of these and the round ring and then once you know how to do this you can do two more and I'll just quickly teach you how to put this together in order to make it work. So what are you gonna need in order to do a dishcloth? So for the kitchen you need cotton yarn. You can't use acrylic and you can't use any other kinds of blends. You need to have a cotton yarn based when you're doing any of these kind of projects. And the reason for it is that the cotton can dry out. You can machine wash it. It's, it's great to scrub your dishes. Will last you a long time because it is cotton. So we have two different brands of yarn here. Both are made by our friends at Yarnspirations.com and we have Bernat Handicrafter. We have different size packaging and I believe there could be different size packaging for the Lily Sugar and Cream as well. So here in Canada where I'm from we know it as Bernat Handicrafter and you will see this in the major retailers near you and then in the US you will know it as Lily Sugar and Cream just like th this. So you just have to use one little ball like this for a dishcloth. You will not use the whole thing and if you're here in Canada you can just get the little ball like so and if you're feeling very adventurous of course you can go big or go home with the big, ba with the big ball. So let's uh, begin to work on the project next. So let me show you how to make one of the leaves. For tutorial reasons I'm using a lighter color yarn so that you can see the stitches better. So we have to make three leaves in order to do it and I'm gonna show you how to do one of them because all three are the same. Let's create a slip knot and insert our hook inside the slip knot. And now we have to chain four. So just yarn over and pull through. So one, two, three and four and now we need to form a ring. So insert the hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through and you have the center ring of your leaf. Let's begin our first round. It says that we need to chain three and it counts as a double crochet and I'll explain that in just a moment. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. So in the rules of crochet this counts as a double crochet according to this pattern. So we need to double crochet 13 more times into the center of the ring. So we have to take this straggler, the loose end, just lay it over top of the ring. So when you go to double crochet, so we wrap the hook going into the center of the ring, yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through, two and two. That's a double crochet. That'll trap the straggler into position so you won't have that coming out. So I need to have a total of 14 double crochets all the way around. Now it said 13 double crochets but the chain three counts as one of them. So therefore there's a total of 14. So you should be able to pull these apart and just count them, count the posts and there should be a total of 14. So just continue to double crochet in the center of the ring until you can count 14 of those posts going all the way around. Uh, continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I now have a total of 10 so far. If you're running out of space because you are going around the center of the ring just grab the whole thing and just kind of pull it and it will shift to all this. So this is number 11, so 12, 13 and 14. So there's a lot of stitches in that chain four space. So let's just count before we join. So just just pull them apart. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 and as per the instructions we're just going to join it to the top of the first chaining of three with the slip stitch like that in order to bring that ring closed. So let's move along to round number two. So round number two, I have a very easy round. So we're just going to double the size of the circle. So we're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and into the same space where it's joining you need to double crochet once again. So every stitch all the way around is going to have two double crochets in. Okay, so just put two double crochets into every stitch going all the way around and this will help double the size and get the the circle to be much bigger. So you're thinking to yourself because I was just thinking it, when are we gonna get to the leaf part? That's coming up next because we only have a total of four rounds on this whole thing. So this is round number two. So two double crochets into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So I'm coming up close to all the way around and I wanna show you exactly where you need to stop because this is when most people especially in a circle go wrong. So you should be, I'm actually done 
it looks like I have one more but I don't. This, this here, see how it extends? It's part, the first two is part of this one here. So you should be able to count a total of 14 of these in a row. So they're, they're in sets of two. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so there was two in each and I just counted them in by groups of two. Once you confirm that, just join it to the top of the beginning, chain three, like so. So a lot of people end up adding an extra stitch right at the end and that's when they go wrong on a project like this. Let's move along to round number three. So round number three we are going to start making the shape. So the shape is gonna be like the leaves that you see. So let's just take this slowly step by step and let's get it done. So we're going to chain four and as per the instructions it says chaining a four counts this time as a treble. So last time it was chaining a three, this one's a four. So this is a treble. It says to do one treble, chain one and two trebles into the same stitch. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So to do a treble we wrap twice and we go into the same stitch that it's coming out of and we just pull through two, two, and two and then it said to do a chain one and then two more trebles into the exact same stitch. So just wrap that hook twice. So we're making like a, uh, a turn. So just visualize these as triangles and not leaves and it will help you then figure that out. So there is your corner just like so. So it says one treble into the next uh, stitch. So we wrap the hook twice going into the next stitch. So that's a treble. And then it says, what do we have here? It says one double crochet in the next seven. So the next seven in a row are double crochet. So let's do that. So let's count those together. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, just like so. Now it says to do one treble in the next double, in the next stitch, so a treble. And then the next stitch according to the instructions is like a corner again. So in the next stitch there will be two trebles, a chain one and two trebles. So let's start that. So there's one treble, wrap the hook twice and going into the same stitch for two trebles, followed by a chain one and then two more trebles into the same one. Okay, so we're just gonna change it up a little bit and now it says to do one double crochet in the next stitch. So it's a slightly different than what we did before. So it's one double crochet in the next uh, double crochet and one half double crochet in the next two. So we're just gonna wrap the hook and you do half doubles for the next two it said and then it says one single crochet for the next five. So the next one is gonna be single crochets for the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we got that down under our belt and then it says uh, next one uh, single crochet in the next five. Now it says two double crochets, w one chain and two double crochets in the next. So I guess this is the base of it. So there's gonna be two double crochets here followed by a chain one and two double crochets once again. Okay, let's keep following the pattern and it says um, what do we got here? It says one single crochet in each of the next five. So coming right to the next stitch. So, so one, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. One half double crochet in the next two. So just one half double crochet in the next two. And it says one double crochet in the last one. So that's the very last stitch that you're running into. And then it says join with the top of the slip stitch 
from the top of the first chain here. So we'll just come right to the top of the first chain and just slip stitch it to bring it to a conclusion. So you can kind of really see what's going on here and so I'm almost assuming that this here is the outside of the, the clover and over here is uh, the base of where it's all coming together. So let's move along to the next set of instructions. This is round number four and this is the final for each of the leaves. So round number four is quite easy. So we have to just identify where the corners are. There were the chain one spaces. So there's one, there's one here, two and three. So what we have to do is we have to chain one and we single crochet into the same stitch and into the next stitch and now we're on a corner. So every time you get into these chain one spaces it says to do two single crochets. So one and two followed by um, a chain one and two single crochets once again. So corners are two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets. So all the rest of the stitches all the way into the next corner is just going to be one single crochet each. Let me try that again. So we gotta get into that first one. So we just have to, you can count it if you wish. I wouldn't bother. I would just look for where the next corner is. So just single crochet. You can always change up your colors if you wished whether you like the dark clover or not. Okay, and you just keep on going until you see the next corner. So here's the next corner here. So in the corners remember it's two single crochets followed by chain one and two single crochets. Okay, and now the next stitch is in a row are all single crochets. So you're going all the way around in the same fashion. So you're gonna do the same steps for all three of your leaves. So this is one of them if you're doing this uh, tutorial for the first time. And of course you just have to backtrack and just uh, um, rewind the video in order to redo another leaf. Okay, so I'm looking for the next corner. Corners here, there's two single crochets. Chain one and two single crochets. And we're coming up to the home stretch. So at the home stretch you are going to join with the first single crochet, fasten off and then you're going to put it aside and wait and get all your leaves done and we still have to do a hanging ring as well. So you come all the way to the end just like so and then just join it to the beginning single crochet like this. We do a nice job weaving your ends but you can see the size of my hand compared to this. So when you see the whole thing done it will be a nice generous size. So fasten this off to do that. What I would recommend is probably a darning needle. So just trim your yarn. Okay just pull it through. A darning needle is the best way especially if you're gonna be scrubbing dishes and um, you want to do a great job on that because you don't want your tails falling out as you're doing your dishes. And most people would probably be using this as a decor item as well. Okay, so just using your darning needle just slip underneath some of the stitches on the underside so don't go out to the outside edge. So go in one direction. Okay, through a different path back in the same in the other direction. and then back again in the next. So if you go in three different ways just like that you will not have your stragglers falling out and so you're gonna trim and you would also do the same thing when you're doing your sewing of your leaves together. Okay so that would be the conclusion on how to do a leaf. So let's review on how to do the handle. So we've gotta start up another yarn strand here and we are going to do a chaining of 41. So the handle even though it looks like it's a complete circle it's not done as a circle. So you're going to just uh, chain 41. So just one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to 41 and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Now that I have my 41 on here I go second chain from the hook. So one and two and just go second chain of the hook and I just want to single crochet myself all the way down through the chain. So you're gonna grab all of those uh, chains all the way and then we have to do one more row uh, and to bring the handle to conclusion. So single crochet all the way down your chain. 
So I've now just single crocheted myself all the way down. So I'm just gonna turn the work and go all the way back one more time. So here's what it looks like. So to go back then we chain three, one, two and three. That counts as the first double crochet for the first stitch. Come into the next one and just double crochet yourself all the way down the chain just like this. So uh, please do that and when I come back do not uh, fasten off. Just uh, wait for me. Uh, we're gonna use that remaining string in order to kind of sew things together. So if you fasten it off and weave in your ends you'll have to restart a new string but if you plan it right you won't have to and save you a lot of time. So continue to single cro or double crochet all the way down your row. So I'm coming up all the way to the final single crochet and I want to do that and I want to stop this now. We're completely done the handle part. So I wanna leave an extra long string on here. Okay, just like this and I wanna pull it through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same string to fasten it to the beginning to create that ring. Okay, so we're just gonna throw a darning needle on. I'm gonna show you how to whip stitch right now. And you'll need this tip also for the, for the other part. So just line it up to the outside. Make sure it goes completely in a circle. So put it through to the other stitch on the other side of the ring. And just pull through. It'll bring things together. So a whip stitch just come up back over to the original side and just straight across. Okay, just working your way down. Okay, you notice that I'm not going into a gap space. I'm going right into the sides of the first post on both sides. So if you go into gap space it'll be um, really quite obvious. Uh, you probably will not like it most likely as well. So coming all the way back down and then just like I showed you before on the other sample. So we wanna finish off so I'm just gonna tie a knot just coming in, just coming back through and I wanna do that a couple times. So if you slide your needle into some fibers it really locks it in a position versus going into spaces. So now that I'm done I'm just gonna slide it through some of the stitches. Okay, one direction, come back in a different path and then go back one more time across in a different path like so. Okay, so that just attached everything together and I also, I can then cut it right down and then what I want to do is that I wanna take the starting string that we had, throw that into the hook or needle as well and I just kinda wanna bury it. So I'm just gonna take it with me, just kinda go through some fibers underneath. Okay, and I can safely cut that as well. So now we have to get your leaves done if they're not already done and now we have to start attaching it to this ring. Let me show you how to do that next. The first way to attach it is that you have to look at these and determine which side is the attaching side and what you're looking for is that round number three. See the single crochets here and on this side they're not existing over here so this is the outside of the leaf. Okay, so what I would do is start off with the middle one and take your ring and look where to, to where you sewn it and then you can either do it there or do it completely opposite and you just want to attach it to one of the strings. Okay, so down over here. So this is going to be the kind of the starting point and then what we want to do then is attach the other two. Uh, so the other two is gonna come on this, one's gonna come on this side and it's going to join with a portion of the ring on the other side here. So it's gonna join together but at the halfway spot and about you know the same distance on the on the actual ring and then the other one is gonna join to this side again join it to about the halfway spot and then also just work its way down the ring. Let me pull up the photo and just uh, show you that in more detail. So as you can see in the diagram you can see that how the ring is coming all the way down. So I would attach the bottom one first to this ring so therefore you know where that's gonna go and then take the second one and uh, just whip stitch it so it's about the halfway spot. So whip stitch it starting at the halfway from both sides coming down to the ring and then doing about equal distance on the other side on the ring itself between the ring and this.
and then do the same for the other side. So attach it about halfway, come to the middle and then work its way about the same space going down on that ring and do that as a whip stitch and then you have a sh perfect shamrock uh, dishcloth. It's really quite easy. Um, you can have a really great idea. You know you could just do these also as pad, scrubbing pads. So if you wanted a scrubbing pad uh, other than what you're seeing on there you can use that as well and uh, you know using cotton in the kitchen is a great idea as it is. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd and enjoy your new shamrock dishcloth and its compliments of your inspirations. Until next time we'll see ya. Bye bye. <music>